Hey there guys, how's it going? Chris Chillingworth here. Welcome to this video for the cleantrader.com. Uh, um, I want to show you guys something really cool. Uh, something that has got me pretty damn excited over the last few months and uh, something that I'm starting to really bury myself into and proper proper get digging through uh, uh, this, this information. Uh, I want to share some of this information with you today on this video and I think you're going to like it. Um, over the last seven or eight years, my focus has been on mechanical systematic trading. So the idea basically being that you don't need to try and predict the stock market. You can use a very, very simple moving average crossover system and make good money. And that's what I've been doing over the last uh, technically eight, nearly nine years. Uh, I've had six profitable years. And of the losing years, they weren't. Uh, I didn't really lose much. Um, and they were my first two years of trading. So it was part of when I was uh, trying to establish what I was doing. Uh, my point basically being that I've been making consistent profits just using a basic, very simple, mechanical, systematic trading system. And for the last six or seven years, a lot of people have been asking me how it's done. And I've been teaching people. Uh, I create courses purely off the back of people constantly asking me, can I show them how it's done? And I ended up just doing a course uh, because it's, it doesn't require my one-to-one -one tuition at that point. And um, and it's grown from there. I've done more and more courses and I've been uh, you know getting into one-to-one -one coaching for the last two years as well uh, and helping people on a one-to-one -one basis implementing the stuff that I've been teaching. The one big gap that the whole approach has had and, I, you know, hand on heart, I, you know, hold my hands up to this um, people have struggled with identifying trades that they can use these systems on so for example you might run a scan in the day and find you've got 300 different opportunities and the question has always been and the question I've been asking myself has been how do you pick through those 300 how do you just choose a company and you know, when you've got all these signals, you've got your mechanical systematic trading system that you're going to follow, but there are 10,000 stocks out there to trade. How do you pick between them? And it's always been a difficult area. Uh, I've been doing research for many, many years trying to identify how we can uh, be more savvy on stock selection. And to date, I've never been able to really find anything that's really worked. Uh, I've done, I've studied candlestick patterns, I've looked at all that kind of stuff as well, you know, and I've never really found anything that's, uh, that beats random selection. Now, you can make money from random selection, that's what I've been doing the last seven years, so I, I, you know, picking companies where there is an entry signal and trading it and not really worrying about who they are, what they do, anything like that at all. And that has worked. It's done fine, and we typically see win rates between 28% and 42%, roughly speaking. Um, but the, the issue you've got here, and that's profitable, by the way, because we, we kill our losing trades quickly, and we let our, win, our winning trades run to their full potential, and all you need is a couple of big winning trades in the year, and you make a profit, because we're, we're completely managing those losing trades. Um, <clears throat> the problem you got there is that you can have trader A and trader B trading the exact same system, but if they choose different companies, if they choose different stocks, they, they can get wildly different results off the back of that. And that's always kind of bothered me. And I, as a trader, when I got to that point, when I reached that point where I have felt like I'd mastered this approach to trading, it's, it's a mechanical systematic syst uh, trading system. It tells you when to get in, when to get out. You have I have very strict risk management rules that I follow, that I teach in my courses and stuff like that. Once you've mastered all that, then and and you're no longer your emotions are no longer getting in the way you know to control your emotions you know you know how to hold on to winning trades you're cool with closing losing trades you know straight away and you've mastered all those emotions i found that i lost a bit of the challenge there was there wasn't much of a challenge for me it was a case of just right well, i just follow the system and i make money but i kind of lost the love for trading to a certain extent even though it was profitable and making me money I didn't feel like I was being challenged anymore. It was, it was, there, there was nothing going on. It was just robotic. I was just getting in, getting out, and uh, and it felt like there wasn't any skill involved anymore. Even though there was, uh, in, in in terms of discipline and sticking to a system and not allowing my emotions to get in the way. Once you mastered that, it no longer no longer required further skill for me. And so I started to uh, spend my time in 2019 
starting to look at, right, how can I identify companies better? How can I whittle down the 10,000 stocks laying in front of me or, you know, the thousand stocks that appear in my daily scans? How can I filter through these and fine tune my approach? And I started to look at many different ways of doing that. And one way I've looked at is uh, is getting more involved in fundamental data, i.e. the financials that are going on behind the scenes of these companies. Now, what I've learned over the last well, probably six months nearly, is that most investors don't know what to look for. When it comes to financial data and the the, the profit and loss and the, the income statements, the balance sheets, the cash flow statements, most investors do not know what they're looking for and they don't know how to read the data. I've spent the last six months studying how to read this data and I have uh, put together a uh, like an algorithm, a set of rules that I am looking for in a company that would, for me, display that this company are going to do well over the next five, ten years. My thought process here is that using these mechanical systems, can we use this technique that I have developed, uh, studying these fundamentals, to identify companies that go into a watch list that are going to... Uh, improve our chances of making more money on a systematic on, on on our mechanical systematic trading systems is there a way of doing that and what i want to show you is some results of what i've done because i think it's going to excite you uh, it certainly excited me so what i'm looking at here is just one example of many that i found now uh, and I'm starting to find a, a very strong pattern here, a correlation here. So here in front of me is a uh, spreadsheet on Halma PLC. Now, this is the research that I've been doing in this company, analyzing income statements, bank, uh, balance sheets, and cash flow statements. And I'm not going to go in this video, I'm not going to go through the whole process of what I do here. Um, but I just want to show you guys the correlation between the results and what's going on on the charts because it's very exciting. So there are a number of hurdles a company needs to be able to jump over for me to give it a green light. So I'm looking at many, many different things. I'm looking at of the uh, turnover, the revenue that company is making, how much of that money do the, does the company keep after the cost of doing business. I'm looking at how much do their expenses cost them as a percentage of what they make. How much are they investing in research and development? How much depreciation is the company uh, running with right now? How much are they spending on paying off the interest on debt that they currently have outstanding? That sort of thing. Um, I'm also looking at what are they putting through their books in terms of one-off sales that are not recurring that make their profits look better than they actually are. So when they report that they've done, you know, they've had a record earnings year or whatever, like you can you can go through the data and you can identify, okay, well, they don't normally sell this particular asset. This was just a one-off sale, which has made the results look better than they are. And if we subtract that, what's the true picture of what they actually made that year from recurring business revenue and stuff like that? So it's breaking that stuff down, looking behind the scenes, you know, looking at what's going on behind the numbers. I'm also looking at things like earnings per share and the the everyday sort of ratios that other investors are looking at. Um, we go through the balance sheet and what we're looking for here is essentially, does the company have enough uh, short-term assets, i.e. As money that they can get access to really quickly if they need to, uh, against their short-term debts, their short-term liabilities? So do they have enough assets to cover that? Do they have, uh, is the company making enough money in net earnings? So once all the expenses are taken out of it, are they making enough money from their earnings to pay off their long-term debt, debt that they've got to pay off over the next five years? Are they making enough earnings that cover that? I.e. if they had to suddenly pay that debt back, how long would it take them to be able to do that? You know, what, if it's going to take them 10 years to achieve that, they don't pass the grade. You know, they, they have to be able to do that much quicker. And um, we're looking at all of these different things I'm also looking at um, the the net assets, so the the shareholder equity, what's left once 
all of the uh, the money that's come in and the money that's gone out, what's left, but also what does that company do with the money that's left? And that's really crucial. It's really uh, fascinating for me to understand what companies are actually doing with that money because it tells you a lot about whether or not that company are setting themselves out up to be bigger and bigger and bigger for years to come. Are they reinvesting in the growth of the business? Are they paying it all out on dividends or are they uh, are they retaining some of that money and using it to even buy back their own shares, which is a fantastic indicator of a company that's going to be doing well. Uh, you know, is the return on shareholders equity doing well? Is it going up? How are they uh, of the of the money that they make? The net earnings, how much has been spent on capital expenditure, big, big purchases like property, plant, equipment, intangible assets, that sort of thing. So I'm looking at all of this and I've got a set, hard and fast set of rules that I have uh, put together that I am pushing companies through to see if they pass the grade. Most don't pass the grade. Most companies do not pass the grade. Halma is one that has passed the grade. And this is the bit that's very fascinating for me, because what I found is that from running these tests and looking at just the companies that have done well and and looking at the share price of what that company has achieved in terms of the price of the share moving, I have found a direct correlation between those companies that on paper here with the finances have done very, very well and are setting themselves up in the, in the best way possible. They are planning well for the future. They're reducing debt. They're starting to buy back their own shares. You know, they're growing and growing and growing. So there's less shareholders. They can, uh, any big purchases they need to make they can do so of their own money now they don't need to borrow money from banks you know all that kind of stuff stuff that's showing that this company is just growing and getting stronger and stronger there is a direct correlation between the companies that i found that passed them that passed the grade and share prices astronomically moving like doing very very well a direct correlation there that first of all is very interesting to me because obviously then I'm thinking, right, well, how can I then use this data to capitalize upon that? And the interesting thing here is that had I, and this is retrospective, and I appreciate that, I'm not making any predictions here at all or anything like that at all. Uh, and I'm not even saying any more predictions have come true or anything like that at all. But what I want to show you here is that we've analyzed this company now from 2007 to 2018. These are the income statements that they've been publishing and are available to public knowledge, you know, public access. Uh, we can go through those and we can crunch. I crunch these numbers and I've, I look for these companies that pass the grade. And like I say, most of them don't. Halmer is a company that has passed the grade. And we would have known that Halma were good to go, i.e. they were a green light company, company that have passed the grade, back on the third year running. I'm looking at three years of consistent results that passed the grade before we know this is a company that needs to go into this watch list, into the watch list that I'm creating called the clean watch list. Uh, so we would have had the results come in on the 31st of the 3rd, 2007. We would have had the results come in on the 23rd, sorry, 29th of the 3rd, 2008, and the 28th of the 3rd, 2009. By that date, by the date of the 28th of the 3rd, 2009, or, or just after that when they actually posted the results, we would have known, or I would have known, that this company had passed the grade by that point. I don't need 10 years worth of data to know that. Only three years of consecutive good you know, green lights. So by the 20, 28th of the 3rd, 2009, we would have known that how many to go into the watch list and that we're looking for buy opportunities. This is the exciting bit. This is the bit that I love. <laughs> and I'm going to share with you the chart. And I'm going to share with you here the chart of Halma PLC. Now, this is a very simple 5-400 long-term moving average crossover system. Very big moving averages. You're in this for the long haul. You're looking to hold positions for five years sort of style. This is a long, long-term stuff, right? So let me just go back to that spreadsheet very quickly. We knew on the 28th of the 3rd, 2009, that this was a company to go into the watch list. Once a company appears in the clean watch list, we're then just using our own system, mechanical systematic trading system. That might be you might be trading a 521 or a 5200 or 5400 or something completely different. But what we're doing here is we're identifying these are the companies you want to look at above all others right now because they are set up and geared in a way to do well. 
if we go back here, so 28 for the third, 2009, and let's have a look at the chart. 28 for the third, 2009. So I'm just going to plot that date here. 28 for the third, 2009 is about, about here. So let's zoom in a little bit to that, in fact, just so we can see it in a bit more detail. There we go. 28 for the third, 2009. It's about, we, that's the 30th for the 3rd, 2009. So we're down here, okay? This is the point where we've been identified or we've identified that this is a company that's just appeared into the clean watch list and everything's looking really good. The future's looking very rosy for this company. At that point, we're looking for buy signals. This is a company that's geared to do well. So we would expect the share price to go up in accordance with that. And we don't know how quickly it would go up. We don't know how long, many years we've got to wait for the stock market to catch up to what we've discovered. Um, but it didn't take long. And had we been, had I been running this analysis in 2009 and identified this company based on the rules that I'm now following, we would have had a buy signal on about the 29th of June 2009 using this 5400 trading system. And as you can see, there have been fantastic, fantastic moves on this market. Now, the exciting thing is that of the companies I have found using this approach, most of the charts pretty much look like this. There is a direct correlation between companies that pass the grade on what I'm looking for in the fundamental data and being able to identify these companies so we can use our mechanical systematic trading systems using them with them now i'm not suggesting we use the fundamental data to try and predict companies that are going to do well and we invest in them or jump in them we're still using the mechanical systematic approaches to choose when to get in so we can get in here and get out and then get back in again and ride this one and get out maybe here and get back in again when it goes back above and we're still using a mechanical systematic trading system. We've not abandoned that in any way, shape or form. The only difference is instead of looking at 10,000 stocks and picking them at random, we're picking from a clean watch list of companies that I've identified as companies that should, based on the fundamental data, based on all their finances and the way they run their business, should climb in share price value. In other words, we are trying to increase our win rate and reduce the amount of losing trades we find. And this is for me, who I've been doing trading, mechanical systematic trading for a number of years, using this kind of random scattergun approach and just managing those trades once I'm in them. This has become very, very exciting for me. Now, here's the thing. I have uh, I've got a lot more analysis to do. This is very early days for me. But what I'm doing is as I do this, as I continue this research, as I find more and more of these companies and I put them in this watch list, I'm sharing this information with my inner circle. So I have a one to one mentorship program and I'm sharing these companies with those guys so they can then help. They can create their own watch list of these companies uh, and then use their mechanical system that they're trading, which could be anything, any different mechanical system. They're, they're all trading different systems within that mentorship program, but they can use this watch list to identify companies and identify opportunities where they can run a long only system on where they just go long on these companies and improve their chances of, of making money. And I'm very excited about it. I think uh, so far the data is suggesting that there's a lot of legs behind this and it's going to do very well. It's going to be uh, a game changer for me and my students and my clients. Um, and like I say, with the inner circle, I am sharing with these guys everything that I'm finding, all the results that I'm finding. Now, um, a bit of a sales pitch, but I'm basically opening the door to the inner circle. So what I'm offering is an opportunity for people to get involved in this, to start uh, from the very early beginnings. Now, when I first started the Inner Circle program that I'm, I'm doing, which is a one-to-one a -one mentorship program service that I started in January 2017, and we started this at, I think it was £57 a month. And more and more people joined, and it got more and more popular, and we started doing monthly webinar, uh, monthly coaching calls, and uh, I put more training programs up on the website and stuff like that, which it's all still there. Uh, we did a book club, we we done uh, trading record training, all this kind of stuff, and then I upped the price to seventy seven pounds a month, 
and more and more people got involved and it's grown and grown and grown and grown and grown and more and more people are, are, are now on board and I think it was about a year ago we raised the price to £87 a month. So bear in mind this information is now being added to the inner circle i.e. people are going to be able to get access, the, the people in the inner circle are all going to have access to this clean watch list. I'm going to be updating it every time I find a new company, they will be notified that a new company has appeared on this watch list. It's a green light, it's good to go. Uh, and I'm going to be looking for companies trading at low prices. You know, I'm looking at companies that are trading probably at £2 a share. They've got three years or four years worth of, tra of fundamental data, financial data that shows that ticks all the boxes that I'm looking for, that part that jumps over every single hurdle that I've put in front of the company. Can it pass that can it make the grade? If it can, I'll be sharing it with the guys and uh, the guys and girls I should say. And uh and they will be able to use that information to then, you know, look at trades like this and hopefully benefit from big, big moves like this. Um so I have decided that I want to take on another ten people. Ten people in the inner circle would uh not be too many for me to be spread too thin, um, but would be enough to bring in a new wave of, of faces and, uh, and and grow the inner circle, which is something that I'm very keen on doing, growing a, a, a tight-knit community. We're now doing weekly Zoom calls, we call them. Uh, we use a program called Zoom, and basically we just jump on, on, on video calls once a week, every Thursday at 8 p.m. and also in the morning. Uh, and we just chat about trading. We still do our one-to-one -one coaching calls. There's loads of training videos on the website that you get access to, exclusive access to. Uh, and you get to be part of an exclusive club uh, of, of people who are all working together to try and improve their own trading. And uh, we're planning on doing some some in-person meetings and stuff like that that we're doing right now. We're talking about it, starting to... Uh, talk about the concept of meeting up in person and that kind of thing uh, and it's a very cool group to be part of but it's very very early days there's about 35 members in there right now I'm looking to take on another 10 and f with that with uh, with your access with exclusive access to the inner circle you're going to get access to this stuff you're going to get access to the research that I'm doing and the companies that I find and you can use that information to fine-tune your trading I have decided I'm not going to increase the price despite adding this in so, which is quite controversial because uh, I've been told by several people that I really should be increasing the price of this because this is going to help people make a lot of money. And I'm, I, I get that. Um, and I probably will be increasing the Inner Circle membership uh, to, it's going to go up to £127 a month. But for now, for the next 10 people to come in as a kind of a thank you for support, you know, and for trusting in me to help you as, with your trading, I'm going to keep it at £87 a month just for those 10 people that are coming in. So if this is something that you've been looking for and you feel like I want to get involved in this. I want to be, I want to see this. I want to be getting involved in this from the very beginning. I want to get access to this watch list of stocks that no one else is going to be able to see or get access to. This is going to be exclusive just to members only. Uh, if you want to be part of that, if you want one-to-one -one coaching, if you want help with your trading, if you actually want to get a year under your belt where you actually make a decent profit in your trading then come and be a part of it uh if you're interested just drop me a drop, drop me a line drop me a message uh drop me an email absolutely fine and i will send you details of where you can read up a bit more about what it's all about and if you then decide you want to enroll fine great if you decide it's not for you not a problem whatsoever. Uh, you know, you, there's still the courses that you can do. There's even if you're not ready for the courses, there's the free Facebook group, there's the free podcast, there's a the free YouTube channel, and you can pick up bits and pieces from those uh, free sources. But if you want someone sitting by you, working with you, jumping on Zoom calls every week, doing one-to-one -one coaching calls with you once a month, uh, access to more training material, and access to this watch list of stocks that I'm finding, and access to behind the scenes of me running this research and showing you step by step what I'm going through then you need to be part of the inner circle and at the moment it's £87 a month it will be going up uh, if you get in now at £87 a month you'll stay at £87 a month it doesn't change for you once you're in so that's what I'm doing if you're interested send me a message or drop me an email that's totally cool otherwise have an awesome day have a great weekend and I'll see you guys soon cheers <laughs>